starts right now. Providing hope and healing in the wake of tragedy. The efforts to expand help for those affected by the shooting in Sutherland Springs. A 13 year old girl found hundreds of miles away from her family's Dallas area home. How investigators say she ended up in another state and why they hope her story will save lives. But first. Spring break is in full swing. Vacationers are flocking to popular spots, but crowds bring some concerns. Start passing the ball around and all the germs start getting to your hands. Do we what should be a fun time for families can turn into a trip to the doctor. Strep throat, rashes, upper respiratory viruses are just some of the most common illnesses you could come across this spring break. A pediatrician tells the night team's Patty Santos what you can do to avoid ending up with a sick kid. It's the first day of spring break and parks are crowded. Happy kids potentially carrying germs and viruses. Oh, germs? Um, you can actually get sick for them. Ethan Salazar knows all about it. He's seven. Carry the germs usually on their hand. He says he's going to try to avoid them by it's washing right? his hands. Yes, so. But pediatrician Kimberly Statniak expects some families won't be so lucky. Doctor visits tend to follow spring break. Towards the end of the week, we'll see more of the, the kids coming through, especially with school starting. They just want to make sure they're OK. She says upper respiratory infections are trending in kids already. The kids were seeing more like uh, rhinovirus, enterovirus, adenovirus, human metanumovirus, and they all sound so scary, but they're truly just your common cold viruses. Parents always have that instinct that tells them when sick kids need to see a doctor. <laughs> Dr. Stockniak says most of the time hydration over the counter meds and a steamy bath might bring some ease to mild cases. Also going around skin infections, stomach bugs and strep throat. We've been seeing that a lot lately. Um, usually that can present with fever, headache, sore throat, sometimes stomach pain, nausea, vomiting. Some of those viruses might need a doctor's prescription. She says many of those viruses are spread through touching surfaces, so it might not be a bad idea to bring back the wipes, the hand sanitizer, maybe even the mask if you're visiting a really busy spot. Patty Santos, KSET 12 News. And spring break here in San Antonio also means big crowds. Just last month, we told you about the record number of tourists expected in the Alamo City and local businesses prepared for the spike in visitors as we move further away from the pandemic. The owner of Rita's on the river says he's enjoying seeing everyone out for spring break after the restaurant had to close for 26 months during the pandemic. Other restaurants we talked to also expressed optimism that things are getting back to normal and seeing as March means money for San Antonio tourism. That's a big relief for him. And while there are a lot of people coming to San Antonio, there are plenty of people still heading out of town for spring break. According to Fly San Antonio, parking over the airport is filling up, but there are still some spots available. And David, what a nice day for people to enjoy our city. A high temperature of 70 degrees, a little cooler than average by about three degrees. And when you consider that this past weekend we were in the 90s, this is a welcome change for folks. But we're going to have a bit of a roller coaster when it comes to the rest of spring break. First of all, let's talk about temperatures. So it will be cooler tomorrow. Highs will struggle to get out of the 60s, but it will be warmer on Wednesday and especially on Thursday. There is a potential potential for some storms though this week, especially on Thursday night. Some of those storms could be on the strong or even severe side. And then beyond that, this weekend we are going to be much colder. Potentially temperatures as cold as in the 40s and uh, low 50s. It may even be damp at times. So coming up in the forecast, we've got a lot to unpack. I'll even be addressing some social media rumors. You'll want to stick around for that in just a bit. David. Thank you, Sarah. And you are looking live from Sky 12. You're looking down on St. Mary Street, just north of downtown. That's where construction projects continue. And that means you can expect some detours if you're driving in that area right now. Alternating lanes on North St. Mary's will be closed from East Mistletoe to East Woodlawn Avenue. That closure will be through this Saturday, March 18th. We've got the full construction and closure schedule posted on our website. Just go over to KSAT.com. 
New developments in the deadly dog attack in a west side neighborhood. The widow of the 81 year old man who was killed now suing for negligence. The lawsuit states she is seeking $1 million. Ramon Nahara died on February 24th in the attack on Deppel Street. Court records show Juanita Nahara is suing the dog's owners, Christian Moreno and Abilene Schneider, as well as the homeowner, Carlos Moreno. The suit claims each person failed to stop the dogs during the attack, failed to keep the dogs inside the home, along with preventing them from escaping the home, and failed to have them leashed or tethered. Visitation services will be held for Ramon this Wednesday, followed by the funeral on Thursday. After two days and more than 14 hours of deliberating, a jury was deadlocked and a mistrial was declared today in the murder trial of Luis Alvarado. Alvarado was charged in September of 2021 in the shooting death of his neighbor, Santos Cedillo. Prosecutors said Alvarado got into an argument with Cedillo outside the apartment complex they lived at. The defense argued Alvarado feared for his life and wanted to be left alone. The district attorney's office could retry the case, but no word yet if that will happen. More than five years after the tragedy in Sutherland Springs, the center set up to support the mental health needs of the community is expanding. The director tells the night team's Lee Waldman that they're eliminating barriers when it comes to bringing care. The kiddos can play. Um, there are specialized toys that you'll see in um, the counseling offices that are there for play therapy. Walking into a home with hope and love, the Center for Healing and Hope of South Texas offers a variety of counseling services. EMDR, which is a specialized processing um, that takes specialized training and specialized tools through technology to allow someone to process the trauma that they've been through. The Ecumenical Center opened this location following the 2017 shooting at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs that left 26 people dead. We were with the communities and the families um, who suffered so much during that time and we've continued to um, be present for them and whatever their need is. That need has given Fisk's team the opportunity to get creative with a new space. Subcontractors who have donated most of the work and materials um, that have allowed for the finish out of this building. Building. This building was at one time just a work shed behind the center. Now it'll give them room to expand and help more people with individual and group counseling. If we can bring down the barriers to care and we can bring the services closer to the people who need them, they're going to be more willing to come in and take advantage of that. The counselors here reflect the community they serve. They're from rural areas. Fisk says the center's mission is simple, bringing healing and hope to those who need it. We have wonderful teams of professional folks who give not because of what they receive, but they give because there's a need. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Fisk says they hope to have the construction done within a month and grand reopening to unveil the new structure to the community they serve. Terrifying moments after a driver smashes to a south side home nearly hitting a child. It happened around midnight on Drury Lane near Commercial Avenue and Pleasanton Road. Officers say the man in his 30s was speeding before he crashed right into the bedroom of a 12 year old girl. That girl was not hurt. Police tell us the driver did try to run but was caught just a few blocks away. A wild police chase on foot that left officers with cuts and bruises. It all began around 7 o'clock this morning at an apartment complex after officers caught a man breaking into a vehicle. He took off running once he saw the police. They chased him near Highway 151 and Ingram Road. They had to jump over fences. They ran through woods. Some officers even sliced up their arms on barbed wire as they pursued the suspect. The man was eventually caught. No one was seriously hurt during that pursuit. A scary scene just west of downtown after a man was clipped by an oncoming train. That happened around 1030 last night on North Kamau Street near West Commerce. Police say the man was walking alongside the train tracks, fell over. Luckily, the conductor saw him and was able to stop the train. The man is in the hospital and we're told he's expected to be OK. And that's a look at your night beat news flash. If you are scheduled to get a vaccine for COVID-19, the flu or anything else, sleep could be critical to the effectiveness of that shot. A new study that found poor sleep hygiene may decrease a vaccine's impact, especially for men. Researchers say sleeping less than six hours the night before getting the shot may limit the body's response to the vaccine and may result in reduced protection against the virus or bacteria. 
Experts say good sleep not only amplifies, but may also extend the duration of protection of the vaccine. And attention pet owners, a recall on a prescription dog food has been expanded. Purina Pro Plan Veterinary Diets EL Elemental Prescription Dry Dog Food was initially voluntarily recalled last month due to a supplier error. It caused potentially elevated levels of vitamin D in some of the product. Now that recall has been expanded following an investigation by Purina. While vitamin D is essential nutritional for dogs, it can create health problems in high doses. It is a popular restaurant on San Antonio's north side, and it's closing for good. Ahead on the night beat, while the restaurant's owner says there is some good news, though. And a missing 13-year-old found alive a thousand miles away from home. The story investigators want every parent to hear. Nearly $9 billion. That's what the Federal Trade Commission says Americans lost to scam artists last year. None of us, uh, no matter how smart we think we are, are uh, without risk when it comes to falling victim to these scams. Tomorrow on GMSA, some scams to look out for so you don't fall victim to fraud. As parents, they've got to wise up and see that the dangers to these kids, it just continues to go on. A sheriff's warning to parents after deputies found a missing Texas girl alive in North Carolina. The 13-year-old was found in a locked shed on Friday. Investigators say the shed is on the property that belongs to the 34-year-old suspect. He is accused of meeting the girl on social media and luring her to his car. The man now faces several charges, including child abduction, human trafficking, and rape. Tonight, the girl is back home with her family in the Dallas area. Back here at home, a popular local restaurant is closing the doors at one of its locations in order to focus on the other. Rosario's owner, Lisa Wong, says the restaurant on San Pedro Avenue is closed for good. That announcement comes after Rosario's Southtown restaurant relocated on South St. Mary's in February. Wong said operating under one location makes the most sense. She says current Northside location employees will be given the opportunity to relocate to the new Southtown location. It is one of the biggest parties in Texas and it's going on right now. We're talking about South by Southwest and one of the highlight events is the Creative Industries Expo. Last year, nearly 25,000 people visited the Expo at South by Southwest and this year conference organizers are braced for an even bigger crowd. The Expo's goal is to take attendees into the 22nd century and beyond. Hundreds of exhibitors from around the world meet at the convention center to collaborate and share their discoveries. For all things South by Southwest, you can head over to KSAT.com and don't forget to check out our live streams from the events on our KSAT YouTube page. Outside with live cam, little breeze, American flag blowing. Sky cam has got a really nice yeah. view there. And look at that temperature, 61 degrees, getting a little chilly tonight. It is. It's and you know what, David? Temperatures all over the map this spring break. And even though spring officially starts next Monday. It starts next Monday? Yep. We may struggle Ooh. to get out of the 40s next Monday, David. Ooh. That uh Yes. That sounds like old man winter sticking around a while. Yes. You and go. not to mention it, we've got some spring like storms in the forecast oh, as well, at least for a rain. window of that, too. So a lot to deal with in the forecast. Let's get down to it. Let's talk about the day today. We got up to 70 degrees for the high. It was a beautiful day, three degrees shy of the average. It was stayed in the 60s up in the hill country uh, and even down in Pleasant in 69 degrees. Now, this is impressive uh, cooler weather, too, because we were at 92 on Saturday. We were in the 80s yesterday. Yesterday, so a little bit of a cool down and we're going to continue with that trend tomorrow. As we look at the weather setup, there are a few isolated showers out in Lavaca County right now. Uh, some sprinkles have been reported around San Antonio, but really, honestly, the big story tomorrow is that we're going to have a little bit more cloud cover and it's going to be a bit cooler. There is a big nor'easter setting up across areas in the uh, northeast. This is going to continue to cause some travel issues the next day or so. So keep that in mind if you have friends or family or you yourself may be traveling across the nation for spring break. 
Meanwhile, that's going to be pulling in a little bit of cooler air tomorrow. So tomorrow will be cool. We'll only be in the mid 60s, so some five degrees cooler than today. Then by Wednesday and Thursday, we see a warm up. Wednesday will be near 70. It'll be humid on Thursday with highs in the 80s. And then a big system change for us comes strolling through on Thursday night in the form of a very strong cold front. This is a snapshot at overnight Thursday into Friday. There's about a 40% chance of coverage of some storms. So scattered storms is that front moves through. It's that time of year where we can see some severe storms. Right now, the severe threat is really north of Austin toward Temple, Waco, Dallas, Tyler, Bryan College Station, Lufkin and Texarkana. But even here in San Antonio, we're going to be on alert for a couple of strong storms overnight Thursday into Friday. The main threat there would be some smaller hail. We'll keep an eye on that for you. But then behind that front, the second part of the story is that it's going to be much, much colder Saturday through the weekend and into next week. 40s with a high near 50 and there is even a chance for a little bit of precipitation too at that time cold rain likely uh, at times uh, so keep that in mind there's been some rumors around social media that uh, with some of that dampness there could be a snowflake or two mixed in it is far too early to tell you that for sure. What we do know though is that it's going to be much colder Sunday and Monday. Take a look at that highs only in the 50s after a day on Thursday where we'll be in the 80s. So a huge drop in temperatures for us. Winter's last grasp as we officially head into spring. Before tomorrow, you know, it'll be cold in the morning, 49, at least cold according to our standards here in South Central Texas. And then in the morning, we'll spend most of the time in the 50s, around noon, 59 degrees, increasing clouds tomorrow too. So that by the afternoon, it's going to be mostly cloudy. There's a 10% chance for a stray sprinkle or two, like what we saw today, 64 for the high. So again, bring that jacket with you tomorrow as you're heading out the doors. 43 in Bandera, 43 in Bernie, 43 in Bulverde, 50 at Stinson. You'll want to shed off that uh, jacket layer and perhaps just a light sweater tomorrow, but it'll be really nice in the afternoon. 64 degrees in San Antonio, 68 at Stinson, 66 in Hondo. Again, a jam-packed forecast for you. That KSAT Weather Authority app is going to be handy. We're updating the forecast as all of those details come into a 2020 view. I did just want to put on your horizon, though, uh, that, again, storms are our first concern Thursday night to Friday, and then the cold, damp weather Sunday and Monday of this next week and end of the week. Weekend. So not really a perfect spring break forecast for folks, but there's definitely a little bit of everything, isn't there? You've got to warn those blue bonnets. Cold air is coming. Hey, <laughs> get ready. This is your warning from your weather authority blue bonnets. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Free agency started today. It's some big names that we recognize on the move already. Yeah, Marcus Davenport, according to reports, is going to leave the New Orleans Saints, the team that drafted him. He's going to stay in the NFC, but reportedly he's moving to a new team. And in the NBA, Zach Collins is starting at center for the Spurs, and he's absolutely digging it. Coming up. After five seasons in New Orleans with the Saints, edge rusher Marcus Davenport is heading to Minnesota to play for the Vikings. Reports from multiple NFL sources indicate the Stevens High School and UTSA product is signing a one-year $13 million deal with the Vikings. Davenport played 15 games last season, started nine and recorded 29 tackles, 16 solo tackles, and recorded half a sack. He has 21 and a half sacks in his career. The Saints drafted him with the 14th overall pick in 2018. Zach Collins has embraced his role as a Spurs starting center, and it's really showing in his production. Zach took over after the Spurs traded Jakob Pertl to the Raptors, and he gives the Spurs a different look at the five because he can stretch the floor and shoot threes. Last night against the Thunder, Zach had 23 points and 11 rebounds for his ninth career double-double, and the 25-year-old is loving it. It's fun, man. It's fun. It's fun to be in a starting role, playing all those minutes, you know. If, if human beings couldn't get tired, man, I'd, I'd love to play the whole game, you know. So, uh, no, nah, it's just fun, man. You know, I, I wish we were winning more games this season, but it's definitely a fun experience. It's good for, you know, me going forward in my career just to have that opportunity and to have that responsibility every night to be ready to go from the jump. Um, so it, it's been fun. 
Spurs will host the Orlando Magic tomorrow night at 7. Jeremy and Keldon are questionable. Trey Jones, Malachi Branham, and Romeo Langford are all out. Turning to college hoops, March Madness is here. And for the second straight season, the Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi made the field thanks to winning the Southland Conference Championship. Wagner High School grade and Islanders senior guard Jalen Jackson was asked what did it take to get back this season. We have a lot of returners from last year, so like we knew what it take, took to win. We knew what it took to uh, get back to the tournament. Um, so just having that continuity and then being able to put it all together and make a run in March, that's how we, that's how we got it done. We won conference, and then we won the conference championship, so we can get the bid. So now we got to go win a game or two in March Madness tournament. Head coach Steve Lutz and his 16th seeded Islanders will face number 16 Southeast Missouri State tomorrow at 5.40 p.m. in the South Region First Four, and the Islanders are favored by four. Winners are four straight games, including the Big 12 Championship. The Texas Longhorns have some momentum ahead of the big dance. The Horns cheered at their watch party upon learning their seed and opponent yesterday. And Texas is the two seed in the Midwest region and will face number 15 Colgate in the first round Thursday night at 625. The 7-10 matchup will, in that region will see Texas A&M against Penn State at 855 that same night, which means we could get a second round showdown between the Longhorns and Aggies in that same region. Houston is the top seed and will face Northern Kentucky Thursday at 8.20 p.m. In the West region, TCU is the sixth seed and will play the winner of the playing game between Arizona State and Nevada on Friday night at 9.05. And Baylor is the third seed in the South region and will play number 14 UC Santa Barbara in the first round Friday at 12.30 in the afternoon. On the women's side, here's head coach Schaefer and his team learning their first round opponent during their watch party yesterday. The four seed Longhorns will start with number 13, East Carolina. Now, yesterday was bittersweet for UT because they were bummed out after dropping the Big 12 championship game Saturday night to Iowa State 61-51, but they're still tournament bound. We didn't have a funeral today. We lost a game yesterday. Now we got a chance. Uh, we're going to be in the, in the greatest event there is in college athletics, and that's the NCAA tournament. And um, got a great, great field coming to Austin this weekend. And so we'll uh, we'll get ready for that. Texas and East Carolina will go at it Saturday night at 9 at the Moody Center. And the seven-seater Baylor Bears will square off in round of 64 with number 10 Alabama Saturday 4.30 p.m. in Storrs, Connecticut. This marks the 19th straight NCAA tournament appearance for Baylor and 21st appearance overall. A veteran midfielder made a big debut for SAFC after the break. San Antonio FC striker Nico Hansen won over the fans at Toyota Field Saturday night just 12 minutes into the match when he made a great run and finished to open the scoring against Oakland Roots SC to help SAFC win their regular season opener 3-1. Playing in his first game of San Antonio, he got the defending champs off on the right foot and he's one of many new players looking to make their own mark. It's a new team, so it's it's going to be a new season. Um, the league has changed even. Some other teams are out now, um, and other teams are in. So um, whatever they did last year doesn't matter anymore. And, and, and I think tonight shows us, though, that what we're going to do for the rest of the season, how much we're going to fight for, for the same season, if not better. Lamar Batista had two goals and an assist in his SAFC debut. San Antonio will play a Sunday match at Loudoun United FC at 3 in the afternoon. Off to a nice start. Yes, sir. Good. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Yep, we'll be right back. It is one of the most exciting times of the year for Texans because blue bonnets are starting to pop up in gardens and along the highways. Of course, it is the state flower of Texas, and you urge not to pick them, but we are encouraging you to take pictures of the flowers and share them with us through KSAT Connect. You can see other blue bonnet sightings right now on KSAT.com. But if you do pull over on the side of the road to get the pictures of you and your family, be very, very careful. And do it safely. And watch for ants. And rattlesnakes. And rattlesnakes. No joke. Those are. They, they could be hiding out in there. But for enjoy real. and be safe when you do it. Absolutely. Cool tomorrow, 64, but warmer Wednesday and Thursday. We we'll may have a stray shower to tomorrow and Wednesday, but 80 on Thursday, some storms possible Thursday night, and then big cold over the weekend. So those blue bats better be ready to go yeah. for the cold. Thank you. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget, good morning. San Antonio starts at 430. Have a great evening.